good morning everybody today we're going to do a painting of Castle Carrig Cannon which is in Carmarthenshire I thought because we're all struggling with getting out and about that it might be nice to do a local scene which we can't actually get to unless you live near Carrig Kennan then obviously you can um, we can see it from here but we can't actually go to it because we're not allowed still not allowed to get in our cars and go out which is right okay so I've drawn out a little sketch here um, Carrig Kennan is is on the top of a, a large hill um, in the west of the Brecon Beacons the very west of the Brecon Beacons and it was painted by Turner at one point. Um, we're going to use a little bit of grey. I've got some pre-mixed grey here and then I've also got some grey that I've mixed um, from a previous painting that I store in a, an old camera film case and some um, burnt sienna or raw sienna just to give the sky a little bit of yellow and a bit of white. So we're going to paint this in acrylic, like I said. I've also got my Stay Wet palette, which I have a tutorial on how to make. That's just a plastic container with a bit of greaseproof paper in and a wet um, towel of some kind or um, a sponge. Um, you squeeze the paint out onto it and then you can put a lid on it if you don't use it all. And then I've got a couple of pots of water, one for mixing and one for cleaning my brushes off and then I've got a few brushes here all round brushes different sizes all for acrylic um, you can tell that they're for acrylic because they're brown um, sorry that they're, they're, they're um, they should be white haired but these are actually for acrylic they can be brown as well um, just be careful that you use the right brushes <coughs> okay so we're going to do the sky first. I'm also going to use a hairdryer just to speed things up a bit. So in the sky, we're going to put a little bit of white paint just to um, get the sky moving. So I, I often use white paint um, under things with acrylic and oil. And also, obviously, you can use water mixable um, or water soluble oils. Um, I did a, an art chat about water soluble oils last Thursday, which is on my Facebook page if you want to have a look at it. Use the water soluble oils very similarly to acrylic, but instead of mixing water with the paint, you can mix the linseed oil the water soluble um, linseed oil that that's what gets it moving so you would use the same technique as i'm using here um, with the water soluble oils okay so like i said just get some white paint on that sky the sky is quite a long way away in this picture so we're not going to put a huge amount of detail in but we do need that white paint. Now, I haven't mixed any water with that. I've just put it directly from my tub of white paint onto the piece of... I've got some acrylic paper here. You can use um, watercolour paper, you can use canvas, you can use a piece of old board. It's up to you. Now, acrylic paint dries really quickly, so get a move on. So I'm going to pick up some of this grey here and I'm just going to draw a little bit of paint in on the left and on the right like this and I'm going to use diagonal brush strokes like this and you need to do this reasonably quickly because with acrylic it dries very quick so do it reasonably quickly like I said, I'm just going to use diagonal brush strokes. I'm, I'm painting over the top side of my hill because I want to have a nice continu continuity of stroke. So don't stop at the top of the hill. Paint over it 
and as you go across just draw you, it's almost drying off on you so just draw that paint into the central section so that it blends like you can see there if you find your paint is drying out on you a little bit too much then just add a little bit more paint back in rather than water don't be tempted to pick water up instead pick up a bit of white paint and just start to blend so you can see that the white paint is is acting as a blender for you here okay so now the next thing is to just pick up a touch of raw sienna or burnt sienna and just put it in this section here just about there and again just blend blend it into the gray on the right hand side and then start to blend it into the white again if it feels like it's drying out put a little bit of white back in and just blend like so so it's almost dry what they call a dry brush technique now just going to scrape that the rest of that off my brush so that it can help me to blend that sky in so we're looking for a sweeping sky with a bit more white there <clears throat> okay so once you've got that effect don't have it too stripy now make sure it's nice and blended and that one color blends into the other and so on and so forth don't have it stripy okay i'm going to leave that there so because this is really thin this paint i can now work straight onto those distant mountains so for the distant mountain I've got a little bit of this grey which is the grey that I used in the sky I'm going to take a bit of that and I'm going to put it onto my palette like so and I'm going to take a little bit of with a different brush I'm going to take some of the white paint out of there and I'm going to mix a pale grey so take a bit of the white and put it over there again not too much water now in this gray there's quite a lot of blue and it's quite important that you have some blue in your um, your skies um, sorry in your hills in your distant hills um, because that's the color of haze so if it's not if your gray is not blue enough then take a dot of blue from somewhere and just add in a little bit of blue tone it can be any blue just to make it a blue gray okay that should be enough for this single hill which is right in the distance so here we go I'm just gonna pop this in you don't want this to be too dark I've got a little bit of a gap in the in the sky there so I'm going to bring that hill up a little bit higher don't paint it too thinly I'm always telling my students in Carmarthen when you paint with acrylic make sure you paint it on nice and thickly there's no point painting with acrylic if you don't paint it on thickly enough it ends up looking like a watercolor painting so you can see that I'm just smoothing this paint down I've got a, a, a smallish brush so I can manage the detail of the outline of the mountain and I'm going to leave it really quite simple because it's way off in the distance I don't want it to come forward 
if I was to put any detail in that, then it would come forward. So that's the distant hill. There are a few lines in, in that um, section, but I quite like a few lines, so I'm going to leave those alone. So the next bit is to mix up again a, a slightly darker version of what you've just mixed. And there's a fly in my water, so I'm just going to rescue him. Right, um, so I've got a bit more of that dark grey colour. If you haven't got any grey, then mix some using black and white. So I've got my white and I've got my grey. Now white is quite strong, so just go in, in with it quite um, gently. You can see that, look how quickly that changes that colour. So we're after a darker grey than the one we've just used. Um, this is to create a bit of drama in that distant hill. This um, There's a storm coming in. Um, I'm just going to add a bit more black into that because um, that white has gone right over and killed the grey. There we go, that's better. So I'm mixing that up and I've got plenty of paint here. Now, if I don't use all this paint, this, it will come in useful um, later on when we paint the castle. So now is the distant, the hill that's directly behind, which I think is called uh, um, Ammonford Moor, I think. I can never, I know it's part of the Brecon Beacons, um, but it's the bit of moor that runs behind, well, between Trap and Brynammon and Ammonford. It's a spectacular part of the country. So when we do get lifted out of this, these restrictions, then hopefully you can come and have a look at Carrick Kennan. And at one point, many years ago, apparently there were 20, I think the last number that I, I heard was 26 castles along the Towie Valley. So we're very lucky here to have so many castles for us to paint and visit. But Carrick Kennan is particularly spectacular, mainly because of this sort of escarpment peninsula that it's on. So this hill comes all the way, pretty much all the way down to the side of Carrick Kennan. But down behind Carrick Kennan is a valley with a river running along it. So there's a pretty sharp drop between this hill and Carrick Kennan, which is what gives it the drama. Now I've got a big brush here. I'm using the big brush just to fill in this section quickly, um, as you can see. But now I've got to the point where I need to use um, my small brush again, just to go around the details. So around the castle particularly, we need to be careful. So I'm just gonna paint. Now, if you accidentally paint over a bit of the castle, it's no bother because you can always just put it back in again. That's the beauty of painting with acrylic is that you can now you can see that there's a little bit of slipping going on here now the reason for that is that I had water because my brush was standing in the water um, I've got a little bit of water on my brush now and what that does is it just makes the paint a little bit more slippy than it would be without the water, which is why I say don't add water to your paint. So if it goes a little bit of patchy like that, as you can see, um, that's the reason why. 
you've either not got enough paint on your brush or you've got water on your brush so just be careful with that it's really important that you manage the amount of paint that's on your brush um, the amount of water that's on your brush so I'm going to go back to this bigger brush in the hope that because it's got it well this bigger brush has definitely got less water on it and I'm able to smooth that distant hill out now which is really good so I'm just going to pop some more paint and smooth that area in now it's your choice as to how much detail you want to put on these mountains now obviously because we want to create the drama in the castle and the sky the idea is to leave these hills relatively simple so what they call semi-abstract so you know the hills but they're just blocked in in color okay so it's up to you however if you feel that this is too blank then you can put some detail in there it's up to you um, I'm gonna for the moment I'm gonna leave this as it is um, because I want to carry on and I want to move on fairly quickly so the next thing to do are, are these this sweep of grassland here and then I'm going to show you a different technique to put here so we need some green so you can either mix some green or if you've got pots of green like I have here then you can use them I've mixed these um, I always recommend that you mix your greens don't use them directly out of the tube um, mainly because they're so incredibly strong and they tend to be very very green so this is a mixed green now this I, I feel is also very green so what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix a bit of that with this bit of yellow here that I've got um, waiting now this yellow might need a little because it's been in my stay wet palette and it's been there for a week it needs a little bit of um, mixing so mix it really nicely and I've now I've got a I've got a sort of yellow green tone we want this to be fairly um, bright we want to the effect to be like the Sun is coming through the clouds and hitting the green grass and making it quite vibrant um, so I'm going to take a bit of that I'm also going to just pop in a little bit of white okay and you want that sort of tone Oops, the grey's got in there, but that doesn't matter. Right, okay. Mix, mix mix it away. Add a little... When you're mixing, if it's a bit thick, a bit gloopy, you are allowed to add a little bit of water. Um, but like I said, just be very economical with it. Okay, so I'm happy with that colour. So I'm just going to now paint this at the very top section of... So all the way up to the castle itself along that edge there now you can see that this is almost transparent and the reason is because it's green and because it's yellow I've mixed both of those colors together and both green and yellow in acrylic are quite transparent um, so you may find that you need to put a second coat on this green area later it's up to you again sometimes you can use it to your advantage um, it might make it look like it's got some texture to it so you decide whether you put a another coat on here or not and you can do that later once it's dried off you can just put a second coat on top of this or even a third coat sometimes but you can see that if you leave some of the the marks from the paintbrush on this area here then it sort of if you use it in a sweeping fashion like that it can represent um, the sweep of the landscape 
the marks that are in the landscape. So, you know, like I said, you decide if it's if it looks okay, leave it alone. If it doesn't, then put a second coat on it. Or you can even add some darker green. It's up to you. So I'm just going to move up into this area here. There are some um, jagged rocks just in these sections here. So I'm just going to leave those free of paint. I'm just going to take this over here and then I'm going to leave, I'm just going to put it down the side there. I'm going to leave it about there. So like I said, just you can put some rough marks in if you want to like so. Um, now on the left, I'm going to take a little bit of the dark green and I'm just going to bring it in from the left. And thankfully this paint is still wet underneath so I can just blend it into and I'm sweeping upwards upwards like so upwards so that it blends in and creates the lay of the land rather than sweeping down or across sweep in the direction that the land is coming down from that castle like so Okay, if you feel like you want to add a bit more, then add a bit more. And again, just blend from the left upwards, like so. Okay, so I'm just going to come back in and I'm going to pop in, because this is very transparent. Pop in a little bit more of that green just underneath the castle and blend it downwards like so. This is going to be a fairly long tutorial um, mainly because acrylic takes such a long time just to get on the paper. Okay, 